The first month of a new year is almost over, and it's this time of year that a lot of people have a case of the winter blahs. As the snow falls here at the old stone well, in which the farm is named after, I find myself battling the winter blues and blahs. But I decided not to curse them, but to bless them. Even though the weather is so foggy and it matches the cobwebs that are in my head, and I know I need to find hope, I need that sunlight. Perhaps a kiss from a cow would help, but no, I want bright sunshine. I remember a writer who once said, in the depth of winter, I finally learned that within me, there lay an invincible summer. Yes, inside of us, we can carry around hope, that invincible summer, to get us through the blahs. I especially love this prayer from Thomas Akempis. O merciful Jesus, send the brightness of your light into my mind and banish all darkness from the sanctuary of my heart. Send out your light and your truth to shine over the world. Inspire my mind and fix my whole desire on heavenly things. Unite me to yourself by the unbreakable bonds of love. You alone can satisfy the soul that loves you. And without you, the world is worthless. My friends, if you are experiencing the winter blahs, come, join me now at Old Stonewall Farm, and let's bless them together. See, I haven't gotten very far in my day. I'm still in my pajamas, and I'm still sipping my morning coffee, and it's gotten quite cool, but that's okay because I do like coffee that is not hot. I can drink a lukewarm pot of coffee and be very happy, thank you. But yeah, I have not gotten very far in my day and that's okay. I have a case of the winter blahs. Rather than just sinking in and cursing them, I am going to bless the blahs. And I'm going to do so by basically taking a mental health day and giving myself the permission to not jump into my day like I usually do, but give myself the permission to slow down. So I am still in the bedroom, which is um, not our regular bedroom. This is the guest bedroom, but we never really have guests, so go figure. And I don't think my guests would like to be in this bedroom. This is the room that I created to be from the 1700s with the rope bed and no electric. So I do have a 18th century reproduction uh, chandelier light fixture that is electric, but I hardly turn it on. I just love the old fashioned look of it. And I do have my candles burning right now. So a better place to be on this, my mental health day, than a room that gives me a lot of joy to be in the space that really feeds my soul. We all need that in our, our dwellings. You might have a dream house, or you might be in a small apartment, or you might be in a place that you're not quite happy with. Wherever it might be that you are right now, I encourage you to find a nook or a cranny or some special little corner whatever it might be it doesn't have to be an extra room that you have in the house it's just my husband and myself and this house is very small it's only two bedrooms um but i happen to have that ability that luxury that privilege of creating this extra space for myself i know that a lot of people don't have that but it is important to find sacred space in your life, a little nook, cranny, corner, closet, whatever it might be. It could even be just a favorite chair of yours and put a comfy afghan over it or a pillow and have like a little candle near a table to light. I really do believe those spaces that give us joy, that feed us, 
they really do nourish our souls as well. We all need that little escape, that place to go where we feel safe, warm, at home, peace. So find for yourself this day a sacred space and let that be the place that you run to when perhaps you are needing to take a mental health day. Rather than putting all that pressure on myself to chase away the blahs like that, I'm just going to let myself be where I am right now. And I'm going to just admit it. I am feeling blah. I'm feeling really unmotivated. I'm feeling sluggish. I really need to hold on to hope and hold on to the fact that spring is coming but there's still a couple of more weeks until that happens. So for now, how do we take care of ourselves when we're feeling out of sorts? Feeling out of sorts is okay. In fact, it's nothing to be concerned about unless it's getting really bad and it's really affecting your life. And if feeling out of sorts lasts for uh, longer than it should, please reach out and get professional help. Reach out to somebody, talk to somebody, uh, take care of your health. That is so important. But for this, this just feeling out of sorts and battling the winter blahs, it's normal. And as I was thinking about it, we can actually learn a lot when we're feeling blah. I think it is our body's way of trying to get our attention and saying to us either we need more rest or we need to break out of a rut or we need to challenge ourselves, perhaps take on a new hobby, learn how to crochet or knit. You can tell that's on my mind. I want to learn how to crochet or knit. But the feeling out of sorts and the winter blahs are very normal. And it's a way for us to, I think, take stock of our lives again, to, to just take a step back and breathe and just say, okay, why am I feeling this way? What do I need? How can I take care of myself better? Taking care of ourselves is very hard to do. I think our society, we just look at it as being selfish and we're getting better talking about self-care, we are, but I think it still lingers that if you take me time, then you're, you know, that's being selfish, but it's not. It's so important to our health. So this day when I have so much that I do need to do, I have a lot of deadlines and I am taking on too much as I usually do. I realize that I kept fighting through this, this fog that I have in my head. And every day I just wake up with it. And I think today it's going to just go away. Today the blahs are going to go away. I'm just going to power through it. And this has been going on for about a week now. And guess what? No powering is going to get me through this. And that's when I realized that I really do need to stop everything that I'm doing and pushing myself, thinking that I would just snap out of it and take a break. So I've lit some candles. I haven't gotten dressed yet. I did shower and put makeup on, so that made me feel better. But as I'm taking this time to care for myself without feeling guilty, I remembered when I was a child, my mother used to give us, my brother and sister and myself, mental health days. Now she never called them mental health days. This was in the 1970s and we really didn't talk about mental health. She would just give us permission to take a day off from school. She would ask, what do you have going on tomorrow? Do you have anything important, a test, a paper due, whatever? She would clear it first to make sure that there wasn't anything pressing that I had to um, be at school for. And then she would say, why don't we just go out tomorrow, go out to lunch, go out shopping. We're taking a day off. And I don't know of any other parent that would do that, but my mother was a huge, huge advocate for every once in a while taking us out of school just for the day 
and just to have fun. Many times we would just go to the mall and go to a bookstore and I would just lose myself in all the books and come home with a big stack. And it was always a joy then to go to a special restaurant and have something fun to eat. It did renew me, it rejuvenated me. I have to thank my mom that even back then, she would realize that I would need a day to just recharge. Now, if only I could remember to do that as an adult, to give myself that permission to take me out of my schedule for the day and do something fun, do something different, something that will break up the monotony and just give me that energy to see once again the hope that is out there. So the winter blahs, I'm not going to curse them. I'm not going to wallow in them, but rather I'm just going to realize having the blahs is part of life. And oftentimes it is our body's way of telling us that we need to take a break. If you are like me though, and you really can't take a break, you have to earn a living and you have deadlines and you have people counting on you then it does get a little tricky, but you know, you just can't keep going and going and going. You need to give yourself that break. I think that's why I love that prayer from Thomas Akempis, a prayer for mental clarity in which you ask God to shine light into your mind and to, to clear away the cobwebs so that you can see clearly. Because many times, especially this time of year, I get a lot of cobwebs in my head and I find it hard to hold on to the truth that the sun will come out tomorrow. No, I'm not going to sing it for you. The sun will come out tomorrow. Now I have that song in my head. Oh my gosh. My apologies if I just put that song in your head as well. But in addition to that prayer from Thomas Akempis, I kept turning to a piece of scripture that I've always loved when it says that sorrow and mourning, crying might endure the night, but joy will come in the morning. This piece of scripture has helped me because I've changed it a little bit. So rather saying uh, crying and weeping might endure the night, what I'm saying is the winter blahs might endure the night, but joy will come in the morning. I've been just saying that to myself every day. The blahs might endure the night, but joy will come. And it's just something little I wanted to share with you that has helped me. And uh, I hope it helps you too when you have your days that you wake up and you just feel like you want to go back to bed and pull the covers over your head. So my friends, please take care of yourselves. If it's the seasonal blahs that you have or whatever it might be, if you find yourself in a funk, if you find yourself in that place where you're just not motivated, it is your body's way of telling you that you need to do something different. You need to rest. You need to just find that excitement again, that joy. You need to nurture yourself and give yourself permission for a day to just take time off from the world. Just say to the world, I'm sorry, but I'm not gonna be part of the world today. And then do something that will put a smile on your face. Find a place where you are living right now to create a sacred space, a place where you can retreat to when you're feeling out of sorts. That would be a great first step. And then turn to God and pray and know that this too shall pass. Everything has a season and God is a good and gracious God and he only wants the best for us. And so it is true that sorrow might endure the night and the blahs, especially the winter blahs, might endure the night but joy will come in the morning. I'm going to enjoy my lukewarm cup of coffee and I'm going to enjoy just some quiet time in my 18th century retreat room, my 18th century bedroom, lit by candles and a rope bed and a quilt and a cradle and a cat 
a cat that is purring right now in the blankets. Oh my gosh, to have the life of a cat. Oh, can you imagine? Until later, God bless. Thank you.